Today's vehicle is a heavily smoked in 2006 Chevy Malibu and it's all kinds of nasty. All right, so getting started on the pre-wash rinse here and I'm definitely glad to be working on a smaller car again as I know I can get the exterior done fairly quick but after taking one look at the inside it completely ruined any hope I had of this being a quicker detail although seeing how dirty it is now is just going to make the entire transformation even more satisfying. Now as I spray out the wheel well here, I figured I would give you a bit of background on the vehicle. And so when the owner dropped it off, she was telling me that she's actually giving the vehicle to her teenage daughter, which is why she wanted it deep cleaned. And also told me that some of the stains in the seats were from her puking in the car after a good night out over 10 years ago. So when she said it hadn't ever been cleaned in the entire time she's owned it, I was pretty motivated to really give this vehicle everything I had and make it look brand new again. Now turning to the dirty door jams and knowing that these are simply full of dust, the pressure washer can take care of them pretty easily, although for the really dirty ones I'll sometimes use a degreaser as a pre-treatment to help break down some of the dirt first. Okay, so with the vehicle dry now, I'll turn to these dirty floor mats and as usual, I'll quickly get them sprayed off, but knowing they're a honeycomb design, which can be a bit of a challenge to get all the crevices clean, I'll make sure to do a really good job with the drill brush and we'll inspect every crevice afterwards to ensure that they're perfectly clean. All right, moving to the interior and after quickly getting the front seats removed, I'm also going to remove the entire center console as I know it's going to be far easier to clean all the grime with it out of the vehicle. And after having a quick look at what I'm up against, I'll then quickly get all the garbage and bigger pieces of debris removed before I start on vacuuming. Now I'm sure there's some people out there wondering about the quality of carpet in this car and somewhat surprisingly it wasn't that cheap velcro like stuff that I usually see so vacuuming was far easier and there was no need to use the drill brush since nothing was sticking to it. Alright, with everything vacuumed, I can get started on extracting the seats, and as you may know, I always start with the seats since they'll need the most amount of time to dry, and I know I've seen some people ask if Bissell is able to get them completely dry, and the answer is no, really any extractor you use will still leave them slightly damp, so it's important to start on the seats because it would leave a really bad impression on the customer if they end up with wet pants on the dry foam.
All right, moving to the carpets now. And since there isn't much for padding underneath carpet, I'm able to use more solution than I would on seats since I know I can get it all back out. And one tip I would have for extracting is to make sure you extract from different directions as the carpet fibers tend to lay in one direction. So hitting it from multiple ways ensures you can get all of the dirt and solution out. Here's all the nasty, smoky water pulled from this car. Gross. Now I figured I'd give you a quick before and after on the carpets and boom, everything is looking brand new again. Now moving to the gear shifter where there's a bunch of really stuck on grime, using the steamer is the easiest way to get that dislodged. And for areas like this, I'll typically take the nozzle off the steamer so I can get a higher velocity blast of steam which makes super quick work of this, so I can simply wipe it clean with a microfiber towel. All right, with the detail done now, I'm going to run my ozone machine to try to take care of any lingering smoke smell since the vehicle is going to have a new owner who likely doesn't smoke.